Can you 3D print a fully functional, fully mechanical clock? Before we answer that, let's take a step back for a minute. Here's a quick primer on how a clock works. It all starts with the escapement mechanism, which is made up of some basic parts. The pendulum. By adjusting the length of the pendulum, you can change how fast it swings. This is called its period. A shorter pendulum has a shorter period. A longer pendulum has a longer period. This is super important, but we're going to come back to that. The weight. This is the power source of the clock. Some clocks use a spring, some clocks use a motor, but for our clock, we're going to use good old gravitational potential energy. That basically just means a weight that has some room to drop. The weight is connected to the escapement wheel, which then works in conjunction with the escapement anchor and pendulum to release the energy in the weight at an interval defined by the pendulum period. Remember how I said that was important? If we remove the anchor and the pendulum, the energy gets released quickly, or in scientific terms, it gets converted to kinetic energy and heat. The escapement wheel also has a second job of transferring the energy of the weight through the anchor into the pendulum to keep it swinging. Each full swing advances the escapement wheel by one tooth, and there are 30 teeth on the wheel. This means that to measure one minute, we just need to count one single revolution of the escapement wheel, and boom, we're keeping time. Just as a sidebar, escapement mechanisms come in many different shapes and sizes. Here's a quick overview of 10 of them that I explored while designing this clock. The first is the recoil anchor escapement. This is one of the most common escapements that you'll find in mechanical clocks today due to its ease of manufacturing and simplicity. It gets its name from the recoil that the escapement wheel experiences on every beat. Next is the Arnfield escapement. This complex motion isolates the motion of the pendulum from that of the weight. The weight powers the wheel, which lifts the left escapement arm, and when it drops, it simultaneously gives an impulse to the pendulum while allowing the wheel to tick one tooth forward. Next is the flying pendulum escapement, where the pendulum is a weight on a string connected to the drive weight through this swing arm and bevel gear. As it swings around, it wraps on the posts, winding and unwinding around the posts, which is what releases the energy of the weight slowly. Next up is the square escapement, where the escapement wheel is actually this square piece, and the corners of the square act as the escapement teeth. The simple motion of this escapement is very similar to the recoil anchor escapement. Next is the grasshopper escapement, or what I like to call the teamwork escapement, where these two arms work in tandem to release the energy of the weight slowly. This creates a very interesting looking motion and a very unique escapement sound. Next up is the verge escapement, which is one of the earliest escapement designs. Instead of a pendulum, this uses an oscillating inertial weight, which rotates on a different axis from the escapement wheel. Next is the single pin escapement, where the escapement is a single rotating pin, and the anchor is built into the pendulum, and it interferes with the motion of the pin as the weight pulls on it. And of course, there's the rolling ball escapement, which uses the rolling ball on the track to determine the time interval. As the ball comes to the end of the track, it hits the trigger, which causes the track to tilt in the other direction, starting a new cycle. And then there's the walking bob escapement, where the energy from the weight is transferred through the escapement wheel into bob, and then as the pendulum comes up, it unhooks bob from the escapement wheel, and bob takes a ride back down, simultaneously adding energy back into the pendulum and triggering the escapement wheel to move forward by one tooth. If you want to 3D print any of these escapement designs, they're all available on jbvcreative.com. There are links in the description below to every single one. The escapement that I chose for this clock is the deadbeat anchor escapement, which has a similar functionality to the recoil anchor escapement, except for the anchor is designed such that there is no recoil on each beat. This makes the escapement more accurate and more reliable, and it's also easy to 3D print. This is key for the constraints that I've chosen for the design of this clock, but that's something we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the video. For now, let's keep talking about timekeeping for a minute. Speaking of minutes, our current clock is not that functional. Since each rotation of the escapement wheel counts a minute, each wrap of string around the spool right now only counts for one minute of runtime. This means that with 10 wraps of string, this clock could only run for 10 minutes. On top of that, counting the rotations of the escapement wheel is not a very efficient way to track time. Three minutes. So we need a way to actually count how many minutes and hours passes. This is where gears come in. If the escapement wheel rotates 60 times, that's a full hour. So all we have to do is add a couple of gears such that this gear rotates once for every 60 rotations of the escapement wheel or a 60 to one gear ratio. For this particular design, the escapement wheel has a 10 tooth gear attached to it. This bigger gear is 75 five teeth and that gives us a ratio of 7.5 to 1. This gear has 11 teeth. This one has 88 teeth for a ratio of 8 to 1. To find the total gear ratio, you just multiply the two together, which conveniently gives us 60 to 1. So now we have a wheel that tracks minutes, and this rotates once every hour. To get the hour tracking wheel, we need to add some more gears, but this time with a 12 to 1 ratio. For this particular design, I chose a 15 to 45 and an 18 to 72, which when multiplied together gives us 12 to 1. 
All right, so now that we have the basics out of the way, it's time to design an actual clock. The main engineering constraint I've chosen for this project is it needs to run for at least three days per winding. This requirement has a huge effect on the engineering of this clock. If we want it to run for three plus days, we need to hang our weight off of a considerable gear ratio from the escapement wheel. If we hung the weight off of the minute hand, which takes a full hour for one revolution, each full wrap of string would give us one hour of runtime. With a 35 millimeter spool and one meter of string, this would give us a total runtime of nine hours. I think we can do better. What if we hang the weight off of the hour hand, which takes 12 full hours for one revolution? With the same length of string, we can get 108 hours of runtime or four and a half days. This is what I'm going to shoot for. For the gear ratios required to get this clock to run for so long, we need some precision and strength in the gear mounts. To understand more about this, we need to talk about torque. Torque. If I tie a string to the hour wheel and pull it so it spins one full rotation, you can see how fast the escapement wheel, which is also the seconds hand, is spinning. That's because you just witnessed 12 full hours of a clock running. That's 43,200 seconds. The total gear ratio from the hour hand to the seconds hand is one to 720. We're gonna need a good amount of weight because when you increase the speed by 720, the trade-off is that the torque reduces by 720. That means that the two and a quarter kilogram weight hanging off the hour wheel is reduced to 3.1 grams at the escapement wheel, which is why I can stop the escapement wheel with a piece of paper. If there's too much friction in the gears or the input weight causes things to flex, grinding gears together, there might not be enough force from the escapement wheel to keep the pendulum swinging and the clock would stop. This is why the gear mounting is such an important consideration. I wouldn't be able to get away with fully 3D printed shafts. There's way too much clearance required to make that work. I needed to find an alternative. I created a couple test rigs to test steel pins against cheap bearings and M4 screws. The pins definitely have a better performance, but the holes in the gears needed to be pretty exact and require additional drilling if they aren't. Another one of the constraints for this project is that I want it to be really printable on basically any FDM 3D printer. So finding exact tolerances is a tough thing to figure out. Another consideration for the pins is that they have have to be capped in some way so nothing falls off of them. This was already proven to be a pain in the butt during testing. On the other hand, screws and bearings are a little bit less precise, but they're so easy to assemble. The bearings just hammer to 3D printed parts and the screws form threads in the parts. So you basically just need a hammer and a screwdriver, which is something that everyone already has kicking around. This also allows for a little bit of extra fluctuation in the tolerances and parts. And when there's so many different 3D printers printing these parts, I decided this was the best way to go. With the final engineering decisions made, the last step of the process was to package everything into a design with some nice aesthetics. This meant lots of clicking, rotating the part around, making sure that nothing was interfering with anything else. But finally, I got to a point where I was quite satisfied with the design. I wanted the clock to look unique. I like the idea of a horizontal reading where you can read it as hours, minutes, and seconds. The last thing I wanted to add to this clock just to make it a little bit different than normal is a retrograde complication for the minute hand. Instead of adding the hand directly to the minute wheel, I gave it this spiral cam. Then I added this follower and this gear. So now the minute hand sweeps 120 degrees and then returns back to zero at the top of the hour. I love the way that looks. Finally, I added a gear train so you could wind up the weight with a crank and I created a capsule for the weight so there isn't just a random dumbbell hanging off of the clock. So after many tests, mistakes, trials, and iterations, to answer the original question, can you 3D print the clock? The answer is yes, you absolutely can. You start by winding up the clock, converting human power into gravitational potential energy. Of course, there is a drill attachment as well because I'm lazy, whatever. To set the clock time, you just move the hour hand or the minute cam. Here I have the clock set to three o'clock and we are in business. If the clock's running a little too fast, you can adjust the period of the pendulum by raising the weight up using this adjuster. You can lower the weight if it's moving too slow. To make sure that the clock is ticking evenly, you just need to adjust the anchor mount until you're getting a consistent beat. And once you get it dialed in, the clock is just gonna run forever until the weight hits the ground. At the height that I have this clock lined up at, this clock will run for seven days straight on a single winding. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna print this clock yourself, the files are available on jbvcreative.com. Link is in the description. As always, there's tons more art and engineering content to come. So please subscribe if you're interested and I'll see you in the next video.